What's going on, people? Welcome back to another video. My name is Hugh Izzy, and you're watching another video. We're back. The aftermath, the excruciating pain that we've been through over the last couple of days. We're sobering up. Yeah? We're ready to talk calmly, in a composed fashion, yeah? about our future, about progression, about what is next for this absolute shambles of a football club. So, hope you're all well. Make sure you are subscribed, drop the video a like if you're enjoying the content, and if you breathe oxygen. But for now, let's get the hell into the video. This is for the ones who I'm waking up today, and obviously, yes, reality hits. It's happened again. We're back in the Europa League, and we're doing it for another year. So, I guess... I'm trying to be positive and I'm trying to think about what we could possibly be doing to help ourselves in a dire situation, the direst of dire situations that we do find ourselves in. What are we going to do? So, I have been thinking. It's not over. All is not lost. All right? There is still hope. But it is the hope that kills. And we have a transfer window. Nearly 80 days, basically, for this club to actually sign some players and offload some of the deadwood that is clearly holding the club back. The club have a huge job on their hands to get rid of some of these guys who are on ridiculous wages and clearly either aren't good enough, don't care enough, or are just being paid too much. Today, my friends, we are going to be going through man for man who exactly Arsenal are being linked with, what we can actually expect from this transfer window from Stan Kroenke, how much investment we are going to see, whether it's from Adidas, other commercial deals, or player sales. And we are going to be going through, man for man, this absolute fraudulent squad and seeing who should be going and who deserves to wear this badge. Who deserves to wear this Arsenal shirt? Because some of you... No, we're going to stay calm. Remember? Okay, we're going to start with the goalkeepers. Petr Cech obviously has announced his retirement. That's going to be about 100k off of the wage bill. Bernd Leno's been quite good this season. I think he's been one of the brighter stars of the Arsenal squad. I've got to say, one of the best signings that we made during the summer. Certainly an improvement on Petr Cech, although his distribution does leave a little bit to be desired, doesn't it? Difficult to be much worse than Czechs. Hector Bellerin obviously making his way back from injury. It'll be good to have him back. He is Arsenal's best right back without question. And with Ainsley Maitland-Niles performing quite well, we have had a good little deputy, but it will be nice to have Hector back to full fitness. Socrates has been great in some ways and quite a liability in others. I think slightly overrated, if I'm perfectly honest, but he does have leadership qualities. He certainly likes getting stuck into a tackle. And at the beginning of the season, it was a lot of fun to watch him sweeping and cleaning up so consistently. Um, that said, I think that he's out of position quite a lot and that's why that he's doing all these kind of last-minute challenges that look so spectacular. He's not going to go anywhere, is he? But I know that there are players that certainly could learn a lot from him and he has the will and desire that I require. So we're not going to get rid of Socrates. I think he's been good. Koscielny, I really do have a lot of time for Koscielny. He's basically an Arsenal legend, really. It's a shame that he hasn't won more. He should be much more decorated as a player. His honours list is incredibly short and small for a player of his stature, especially when he could have moved to a club like Bayern Munich or Real Madrid at any time in the last, I guess, six, seven years. He's been a great servant to the club, signed from Lorient all those years ago. I just think it's over now, and I think we have to let go and move on. Get rid of quite a lot of money off the wage bill there, and also bring in someone who's going to have a lot more longevity and a more of a future. Even if that does mean promoting someone like Rob Holding, um, I would be more keen to see regular appearances from someone who's got the potential to be around for a little bit longer. Koscielny just falling apart at the seams now. Uh, Listeiner for me, he's got to go. One of the worst signings that we've made for a while. Is he better than Debushi? Uh, Zabaleta? Is he better than Sanya? You know, now even. You know, good intentions. Seems like a nice guy with his head screwed on. Very successful club player. His career at Juventus speaks for itself, but those days are long gone and those legs are really not up to it anymore. So I'm afraid it's goodbye, Stefan, for me. Rob Holding, the future. Not only a homegrown player, an absolute bargain that Arsene Wenger famously said. You should be happy. He's English. He's 20 years old. But I'm sorry he didn't cost 55 million, so he cannot be good. 
as good as John Stones if we give him enough game time? I think possibly. He's certainly as comfortable on the ball as Koscielny, possibly more so. So I'd like to see him stay at the club and be promoted to first-team regular basis as he was really at the beginning and seemed to be doing so well. Nacho Monreal, for me, he's got to go. He's been a fantastic servant to the club as well, hasn't he? He's given us plenty of years. His work rate is sensational, but I just think he's passed it now. And if we are to move forward as a club that has intentions of progressing, then I think it's probably more brave of us to invest in youth to promote the guys who are coming through the system, to save money, to cut the wage bill. And Monreal, I'm afraid, would have to be a victim of that. He's 32, he's given us six years, he's been a very reliable member of the squad, but I think it's time now. It's time to move on. And then, moving on, we shall do to... a player who certainly polarises opinion... Skodran Mustafi, World Cup winner with Germany. You know, some of us love him. Some of us cannot stand the sight of him. He has been probably the biggest liability. And there is also no denying that he's a quality defender on his day. 17-game unbeaten run we went on. With people calling the Koscielny and Mustafi partnership Kostafi, it was, it was a beautiful time. We thought we had arrived. And... We were so very wrong. We've got to get rid of this guy. He's on 100k a week. Um, serious ambition needs to be shown. And we need to be ruthless about what we're doing here. And that brings me to Carl Jenkinson, who, you know, he seems like a great guy. Really does. He loves Arsenal. He's actually an Arsenal fan. His granddad was a massive Arsenal fan. And he will have been so proud. He's looking down on you now, Carl. You've, you've more than succeeded. You've actually been at Arsenal for how many years? On at least 20 to 40, probably more, grand a week for eight years. Congratulations. I'm sorry. I don't know how you did it, but you've actually pulled off one of the biggest masterpieces of a heist I've ever seen. This is... I mean, it's... It's quite sad, really, isn't it? I mean, I get it. He's a homegrown player again. We do need English players so that we can fill the quota. But we've got to have a little bit more ambition here. We really have to think a little bit bigger. Carl Jenkinson could barely get a game at West Ham. Is he talented enough to take us further? Is he good enough to, to fill in for someone who's trying to take us into the top four? Would he actually get into any other top four side? Because that's what you've got to ask yourselves, lads. Are these guys good enough to play for a City, a Liverpool, a Chelsea? Physically, the guy, he's, he's blessed. He's brilliant. He looks the part. Tall, strong, quick. There's no denying that. But listen, you've been in the gym for eight years getting paid 40 grand a week to go and work out. Of course you fucking look good. Natural ability is something that you can't just pluck out of thin air. You've either got it or you haven't. It's that simple. And unfortunately, Carl, I love you to death, but we need to move on now. We really do. If we're serious, we need to move on. And let's move on ourselves to Konstantinos Mavropanos, the Greek prodigy. We are hell-bent on spending as little money as possible, and so we will take risks. And I think that this was an educated guest from Sven Mislintat, but he's been thrown in the deep end. Is he good enough? We don't know. We really don't know. We haven't got anything to really test that against yet. We're going to have to see more of him. But can he be much worse than what we've been playing? Can he be worse than Mustafi has been at times? Can he be more unreliable or more of a liability than Koscielny? I'm not sure that he can. And there are times this season where I definitely would have given them a bit of a chance, had a bit of faith in these guys and said, go on then, you, can't be, you, you show me what you can do. Because I'm sure that these guys will work their socks off to actually forge a career at the club where some people are riding, right? Freeloaders, yeah? Sead Kolasinac signed on a free transfer. So obviously he's on slightly more money. I don't know how much, but I'm sure it's quite a lot. The signing on fee would have been astronomical as well. What are we getting for our money? Is he a defender? I'm not sure that he is. When we signed him, they billed him as a left midfielder. And I'm starting to think that they were right. He's not really a wing back. He's not. He might play there, but he's much better in the final third because he looks at times absolutely clueless when he's defending. Completely out of position. Actually, when you're in the ground watching him and not, you know... Not with the cameras that are focusing on the rest of the game so you don't see what the guy's doing, but you're just watching the guy for a good two minutes. He's sometimes looking around to get confirmation from other players as to where he should be. Now, 
That's fine if you're a youngster. How old is he? He's not a youngster. He's a fucking big, grown, ogre-looking oaf, right? And he needs to be slightly ahead of this now. He's a grown man. He's a 25-year-old grown man, right? So, is he the one? I mean, he does have exceptional attributes, extraordinary attributes that kind of make me think that if we used those or utilize those in the right way, we could certainly have some kind of advantage there, but I'm not sure how to do this. Great left foot, not as reliable as I thought he would be with the cutbacks and the crossing. In fact, I'm not sure that he's the one. And if I'm honest, if I was being totally ruthless, I'd get him out and I'd get a new left back in. I really would. We'll move on to a player who we signed for cheap from Basel, Mohamed Elneny, the Egyptian midfielder, who is, you know, undoubtedly put his whole heart and soul into playing for this club. It's a real achievement, I think, for him to have made it this far. And he should be commended for his service. But he's quite a limited player. Half-decent squad player, but he's a very limited player physically. He's not very adventurous. He doesn't see between the lines. And everything was very safe with him. So even though that's good for recyc recycling the ball, I just don't think he's the one again. And personally, I would get rid. We move on. Henrik Mkhitaryan, the Armenian, on £180,000 a week. It's quite a substantial part of our wage budget and it's for that reason, I'm afraid, that I would again let this guy go. He has not been up to scratch. He's not been of the level that we remember him from Dortmund. I think those days may well have gone. His confidence seems shot. And his characteristics, his personality, is so similar to Meza Ozil that I don't think we want another guy of that ilk at the club. It's difficult enough as it is. We don't really know what's going on in the background, but it seems to be, you know, more complex than we're being told. And I'll be honest, ever since we made the transfer, the swap deal with Alexis Sanchez, I have been questioning why we were desperate to take the unwanted goods off Manchester United yet again. It's what we love to do. It hasn't worked out. I'd move him on because that's, again, a fantastic player you can get in. 180 grand a week. Guys, around Europe, no one gets those wages. It's just the Premier League. You know, you've got to be a fucking Gareth Bale or something to get anything near that in any of these other countries. Only the Premier League are we daft enough to be giving... Yeah, so I'd move him on, basically. And that brings us on to the next two midfielders, Aaron Ramsey, who's obviously left the club now. He said his goodbyes teary goodbyes picked up his runners up medal in the Europa League when his teammates let him down again and he will be playing with Cristiano Ronaldo next season in Turin we don't have a choice it's a great shame that we've let him go because to me it's our best midfielder very inconsistent but again he's got that driving force that ball carrying ability and that risk taking mentality that you need to create special moments at the elite level. So I will miss Aaron Ramsey, club legend, Arsenal trophies, two fucking final winning goals. The guy was underappreciated and I think has been forced out of the club because if we were serious about stuff, you don't let players go when they're that integral to your team, when you've built that much history up with the player. We will get into the finances shortly. Meza Ozil. Everyone knows I love Mesut. Great player. Been an advocate of this guy since the day we signed him in 2014. £42.5 million. Pounds. What a day it was. Songs. We've got a zil. All this madness. It's been electrifying. Created most chances in the Premier League since the day he signed. One of the most underappreciated players in the league. But he hasn't quite been the same player for a little while. Let's be honest. And one of the main reasons is that the manager doesn't like playing a number 10 and he wants someone to circulate the ball as fast as possible out wide so that we can cut it back and Ozil as a result has been forced out of the middle and much deeper sometimes coming back behind Xhaka picking the ball up from center backs to recycle the ball out wide again if we are going to continue doing that in that style under Unai Emery it's quite likely we will then I'm afraid that my love for Mesut and the knowledge that he is one of those players who can pick a pass and has the vision to see between the lines like almost no other, the knowledge that he is a facilitator who is only really as good as the sum of the parts around him, 
He's a cog, the essential cog that makes everything tick. If that player is then being asked to do this role of simplifying things, get it from deep, put it out wide, and then go back again, and also chase and hustle down and close men down. We are better off getting rid of him. That's the honest truth. He's costing too much money. You can get a player for £20 million who can do that just as effectively, if not more so. These are not Meza Ozil's strengths, and we are not playing to the strengths of our elite players anymore. We're playing to Unai Emery's system. So let's get players who will suit that system. Unfortunately, the quality of the player or the ability of those players to do special things may well be reduced. But if it helps the team structure and, you know, in terms of organisation or really pulling off what Emery's trying to achieve, then that is what we need to do. So, for those reasons, if the club aren't going to question the manager, if the club are going to be soft, if we think that things really are going to be different next year and we're fully backing the guy, we're fully behind his vision and he's convinced everyone, every one of you that this is going to work, we've just got to stick to it. If we are not ruthless enough to go and find someone who can actually pull this off, even with this personnel, then you have to get rid of Ozil. You have to. 350 grand a week. Sell him. You've got to sell him. Lucas Torreira running off the field in tears in the final after putting in a horrendous performance himself, let's be honest. I don't know whether you're feeling sorry for yourself. I really did feel sorry for him, I've got to be honest. Because, you know, it's one of these moments, you know, you may well never get to a European final again, my friend. You may well never get to a European final again. And you bottled it big time. You didn't show up. You didn't show the heart. I don't know what you were told before you went out there, giving us 15, 20% of your... F and I'm not going to get irritated, right? But Lucas Torreira didn't have a great game. He has been a good signing, though. I do worry that he's a little bit small in stature for the Premier League. He does get bullied quite a lot, but he is technically very good. I think we've actually overrated the guy slightly. He's got a little bit to prove. Um, he was meant to be an essential, you know, the new integral part of that spine. And ultimately, we proved spineless yet again. I would personally say that that is more about the personnel and the organisational structure of these formations that have left him slightly exposed with the people that he's next to. I personally do not rate Granit Xhaka or Guendouzi as much as I do Lucas Torreira. Guendouzi may well have potential to turn into something special, but Lucas is a lot closer to being very good now. Maitland Niles I would keep. I think he's been improving drastically. He's been versatile. He's worked hard for the shirt. He's had his own incredibly difficult personal family problems going on behind the scenes that he has pushed on through and he has earned his first team spot in Hector Bellerin's absence. I commend the guy. We're not getting rid of that guy. One of England's future stars, potentially. Dennis Suarez, one of the most useless signings I've ever seen in my life. Emery signing his friends, giving six-month gym passes to Spanish guys that don't play football. I mean, incredible. Absolutely incredible. How many, how many appearances, how many minutes did he play? Did he play 90 minutes all in total? I don't know. What was the point? What was the point? Surplus to requirements again somewhere else. We're picking off people's scraps, right? Living off leftovers. I need a little bit more. And a little bit more we did get from Guendouzi, who was thrust in from the first day of the Premier League season against the best side in the world. Difficult task for a 19-year-old child who looks like a twiglet. Um, clearly has a lot of work in the gym to do, but his mentality is right, and I appreciate that. He works his socks off, and I think he does have a big future, not only at Arsenal, but in France in general. Granit Xhaka, unfortunately, bro, as much as I really like you as a man, I just don't know if you're the one. I'm really sorry. Too many times this season, I think to myself, we should sell this guy as soon as possible because he's really irritating me. And there are times when you've just not really shown the mentality that you speak of. Because when you speak, it's great. right? You speak like a captain, a leader. And for Switzerland, you clearly are. But for Arsenal, it hasn't quite been the same. I'm not sure if the fans will ever really love this guy because of his... Mobility issues, shall we say. And we move on to the strikers, Alex Lacazette and Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. Aubameyang. Listen, where will we be without these guys, right? 22 Premier League goals for Aubameyang. 
13 goals for Lacazette, assists for both of them. Aubameyang, golden boot in his first full season. Lacazette looking like the player that he hasn't been for quite some time. I know he's had work on his knee, but they've been two of the reasons that I've watched this football club this season and two of the very few because they have been electrifying at times. They clearly have an incredible camaraderie. The partnership and communication is elite level. And we will, my friends, be lucky to hang on to both of these guys because Barcelona need a striker and they're looking at both of them. And I wouldn't be surprised if a team who has Champions League football in the bag were going to offer them as good as, if not a better deal than we can at Arsenal. A shame, but we may well have to lose one of these guys to really push forward. We move on to Alex Iwobi. <claps> Scorer in the final. Scored a fantastic goal as well. Very versatile. Make no mistake, he is not a winger. He's improved drastically, he protects the ball well, he takes it down the wings with speed. Yes, his final end product needs work, but you cannot, you cannot doubt the sacrifices that he's made in his life to change his game around because it looked like he was well out of his depth at one stage. Danny Welbeck, I think, is going to be leaving and that's a great shame. Not only homegrown player, but also someone who is capable of carrying the ball past a few people and we need these guys. So it's going to be interesting to see who we bring in there. So that leaves us with the guys on loan. David Ospina, uh, Napoli played him 24 times, but there was a clause in his contract that said on the 25th game, they could buy him for 3 million euros. They didn't want to pay the 3 million euros, so he will be coming back to the club and could well prove a half-decent deputy to Leno if we aren't going to keep Emilio Martinez, who also comes back to the club. Me, personally, I'd probably keep Martinez over Ospina, although Ospina on his day is world-class. We've seen that before for Colombia especially. Callum Chambers was Fulham's player of the year. Even though they were relegated, he looks to have improved a lot, and I would bring him back again, especially because he's homegrown. Takumo Asano... Um, I just don't know what's happening with this guy. I'm not sure what kind of future he's got, but, you know, physically he looks like a little Japanese Aguero. Um, Stats-wise, he scored no goals in 13 games this season and is being played as attacking mid, which, you know, Emery doesn't like. So I don't know whether we'll see any more of Takuma. There are players in the squad, especially in the youth setup, that I would like to see promoted. Um, and we may well see a few of these guys involved more next season, especially if the club are to move on without spending outrageous amounts of money and getting rid of players that are going to free up some wage bill potential. The likes of Emil Smith-Rowe, who's very talented and has spent some time in Germany with Leipzig, and Wakali, Reese Nelson, Matt Macy, Christian Bielik, all of these guys have the potential to be involved next season and me personally, I would involve each and every single one of them because there are players at this club who do not deserve to be playing for this club, earning the money that they're earning, failing in the way that they're failing so consistently and letting us all down. We need massive change and if financial fair play is going to keep us back or hold us back when we've ironically got more money in the bank than anyone else in the Premier League, then we're going to have to make drastic moves by chopping heads off and blooding the youth. Unfortunately, whilst Arsenal are the only self-sufficient club in the Premier League, at the same time, we are only actually making profit after having sold players. And that has been the case for quite some time and will probably continue to be the case. Even though there's £231 million sitting there in the kitty, because it's not actually income and it's being counted as an asset, we're not allowed to spend it, apparently. Stan Kroenke actually could put in his own money, between five and £30 million, I think, and still adhere to financial fair play. But will we see that? Will we fuck? It's been 12 years and he's not put in one penny. I don't know why you think that that would change now. So you need to adjust your expectations because where we were thinking about Wilfred Zaha, that guy wants Champions League football now. Not going to get anywhere near him for less than 50 million and if your budget like we're being told and I don't believe for a second is actually 45 million we're out of that race already we've had the audacity to contact James Madison of Leicester a serious baller we've been quoted 60 million we were thinking more like 20 so again it's going to be a long summer where we're probably being linked with players that you're not really that excited about 
The first of which, for me, is Thomas Mounier, a 27-year-old right-back, Belgian, plays for PSG, or plays for PSG when he can get a game. Very tall, lanky, much like a Belgian Marcus Alonso. And I'm sorry, whilst he is technically gifted, I'm not sure that that's exciting me. I get that this guy's versatile, he can play DM, centre-back, right-back, but do we need a right-back right now? Or are we signing more of Emery's chumps? Is that what we're doing here? I've got a feeling that some of you out there can relate when I say that I really hoped that when we got rid of Wenger, we would become more ruthless. We want success. We're going to have to make some really brave decisions. You're going to back the manager. He's going to need a lot of money because clearly he's taken on a job where he said that he could deal with a certain amount and he's shown on two counts, well, on four counts, that he can't do the business. Whether that's him or the players, or both, we need someone above all of them to be ruthless enough to make the decision to say, do you know what, we've got to fix this. We've got to change, even if it means going through two years of playing kids and building up the potential of these players before flogging them off for profit so that we can reinvest in big guys. But in doing that, you risk becoming Southampton. You're flirting with danger. The only positive that I can take from that is that ultimately, for that investment that we all want to see to be put into Arsenal, we're going to need a new owner. And the owner is not going to sell up until we are basically getting relegated, or have been. We've got the potential to be in a lot of trouble here. I'm expecting Arsenal to make some serious PR moves. Expect a lot of transfer rumours in the next weeks. We are going to be linked with every player and his brother. Strap in, it's going to be a long ride. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new and drop the video a damn like if you breathe oxygen. For now though, I've been you, Izzy, and this has been, um, well, it's just been, hasn't it?